all television and radio stations in the United States will now cease their regular programming. Revelation chapter 13, you'll find two beasts written of, and the first beast, the political beast, is the one world political system, and then it's wounded to death, as you can read for yourself in Revelation 13, and after that, it reads in verse 11, and I beheld another beast, a second beast, coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, because he is the dragon, the false Christ. So the first beast is the political, the second beast is the religious. Satan's one world system and his role of Antichrist. That's what this second beast is, but who is this second beast? Who is the Antichrist? Well, we already know that if he spake as a dragon, that identifies him right there, because if you go to Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. So it's not even multiple choice, that son of perdition, the only one sentenced to perish, and you'll find that death sentence written of, in Ezekiel chapter 28, and we'll go there momentarily, but to identify the beast, the second beast, Satan's role of Antichrist, but it is Satan that will be portraying himself, disguising himself as Jesus, disguising himself as an angel of light, as it's written in Second Corinthians chapter 11. So you read on down to verse 16, and he, Antichrist, Satan, causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, in your mind. This is a mark of deception, a mark of servitude because of the deception, because they're going to think that it's Jesus, and with their right hand, they'll be doing his work for him. This is what Christ meant by woe unto those that are with child and give suck in those days, impregnated in your mind with Satan's deception, that mark of the beast, and giving suck, that's the same thing as in your right hand. It's a figure of speech, meaning nursing along Satan's work, helping him out because you think that he's Jesus. And they'll think that these are righteous acts for Jesus. But whenever the true Christ returns at the seventh trumpet, Jesus is going to make it totally clear to them who they've been serving. And it's Satan that they're going to think is Jesus before that. And that's why Christ says in Matthew 7, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. Because they approach him saying, Do we not do many wonderful works in your name? So that's the in their right hand part. It's a figure of speech, meaning the work that you do. And in your forehead is where your brain is. It's being deceived is what it's talking about. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred three score and six. Kizi stigma in the Greek 666 as a numeral, and Satan appears at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial in the middle of that five-month period. So him and his angels are cast out of heaven unto the earth, as we read in Revelation chapter 12, and that's when the woe of the fifth trumpet occurs that you can read of in Revelation chapter 9. That's the same thing that's going on at the beginning of Revelation 13. That one world system, that first beast having seven heads and ten horns, rising up out of the sea, which is symbolic of people, and at the same time you have the locust army, the fallen angels, coming out of the smoke of the bottomless pit. Not the bottomless pit, they come from heaven. They're cast from heaven to the earth, and they come out of the smoke, that comes out of the bottomless pit once Satan is cast out. So out of the sea, you have the one world political system at the beginning of the five months, and out of the sky, so to speak, we're speaking figuratively here now, the deception blocks out the sun and the air, the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit, and out of the smoke, not out of the pit, come the locust army, Satan's fallen angels. That's what the locust army is. So, counting the number, what does that word count mean if you look it up in your Strong's Concordance? To enumerate stones, and those stones are the Kenites. Ever heard the expression, chip off the old block? Well, that's what it means. Where did these pebbles come from? They came from a larger rock, because a pebble comes off a larger rock, but it's the fake rock, not the true rock, which is the true Christ. It's the false Christ, the king of Tyrus, as he's called in Ezekiel 28. Let's go there now. 
Ezekiel 28 and verse 1, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, which means rock, Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God. Remember, he sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, the son of perdition. Talking about Satan, that's what we're talking about here. That's who God is talking to right here in Ezekiel 28. In the midst of the seas, the sea is symbolic of people, yet thou art a man, and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Thou art a man. God said himself to Satan, thou art a man. So don't let it throw you in Revelation 13, 18, where it says it is the number of a man, because right here he's called a man. Doesn't mean he's human. Not human. He's supernatural. And that's why people are going to think that he's Jesus returned. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee with thy wisdom and with thine understanding. What did it say in 13, 18 again? Here Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding. God has thrown out all sorts of obvious clues as to the identity of the false Christ. It's Satan's role of Antichrist that we're reading of in Revelation 13, beginning with verse 11. That second beast is Satan's role of Antichrist. It helps to understand that for every positive, there's a negative. In Revelation 16, you'll see Satan's unholy trinity, the dragon, the false prophet, which is his role of Antichrist, and the beast, which is not only his one world system, but also also his evil spirit. So instead of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you have the dragon, the false prophet, that is to say the Antichrist, and Satan's evil spirit, because without that evil spirit, you couldn't have the one world system, the one world religious system, and rather than the Holy Spirit in the minds of the people, you'll have Satan's evil spirit in the minds of the people, and that's the mark of the beast, basically. Because the seal of God is the Holy Spirit, you see. You can't have the seal of God in your forehead without the information being taught to you through Christ by the Holy Spirit. All right? It's that simple. It's very simple. For every negative, there's a positive, and vice versa is really the key to understanding this. So, by thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God... He's going to claim to be God, sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And what is the temple of God? It's the many-membered body. He's going to deceive most Christians into believing that he's Christ, and they'll accept his evil spirit into their minds. And there's your mark of the beast in their forehead. Behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. And in Revelation 20, you'll see Satan is locked up in that bottomless pit for the thousand years after his role of Antichrist and his one world system are destroyed in the lake of fire. Then Satan himself is locked up for the thousand years, and then he comes out of the pit at the end of the thousand years and recruits an army. Anybody stupid enough to follow him then will follow him into that lake of fire. At the great white throne judgment, they'll be sentenced to perish at that time. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man, and no God, in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. Notice there's two different titles here prince and king. So take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, and the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy to braze and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. So there was a garden of Eden in the first world age as well. That's what we're talking about. And if you were to go into your Strong's as well as your Smith's Bible Dictionary and identify these different stones, you would have, first of all, sardius, And that means redness, the ruby most likely. The topaz, probably the topaz, Strong says. The diamond from 1986, which is in close proximity to 1984, which is the root 
of Strong's number 1966, which is Lucifer, the Hebrew word that's translated as Lucifer in Isaiah 14. He's also called a man there, by the way. And the barrel. The barrel is Tarshish. And the merchants of Tarshish you'll even find written of in Ezekiel 27 concerning Tyrus as well. The onyx is probably the barrel, according to Strong's, from its pale green color. Remember death and Hades followed with him. Jasper, Yashefa in the Hebrew, and Sapphire is from 5608 to score with a mark as a tally, to inscribe, also to enumerate, i.e. count. These stones came from that larger rock, the king of Tyrus, the false rock, not the true rock. Turquoise means to glisten, shining, kind of like the Hebrew word for serpent that you find in Genesis 3, Satan again, probably the garnet emerald. And then Emerald from 1300, lightning, he makes fire, which is to say lightning come down from heaven in Revelation 13. So what do you got here whenever you look into these minerals and with the barrel, that is a six-sided mineral, okay, naturally occurring, six-sided. The onyx, which it says probably is barrel, six-sided. The smith says that's a sardonyx, that is to say the agate, or the chalcedony, which is quartz. Now look at quartz, and you see the six-sided, naturally occurring six sides to the quartz there, okay, assuming that the onyx is really speaking of the quartz. So, so far we've got two sixes, and then with the emerald, see, six-sided again, there's six, six, six. So you've got nine stones written of here, and when you subtract these three that have the six sides to them, you end up with six again. So there you have it. Six is all over this. Identifying that man, that man of sin, the man written of in Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and six. Six, six, six. You even see it within these stones, and you'll see it within the symbol of the Kenites as well. There's a six-sided shape involved there as well, and you can get three sixes out of that. Also, the Kizi stigma, and you'll notice that if you look at the Kizi stigma, 666 as a numeral, it has the first and last letters of Christos, but in the middle you have this serpentine character going on there, and what is that telling you? That he's going to claim to be Jesus. Christos, he's going to be the false messiah, Satan's role of Antichrist. It's very simple. It's not complicated. And to continue with Ezekiel 28, 14, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. This is before he fell. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. And you can read of this in Isaiah chapter 14. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. He calls a third of God's children to follow him. He deceived them, and God could have either destroyed a third of his own children or created this world age. So that's the whole point of this, and that's why God is allowing him to appear as the false Christ. But the time has been shortened. It's no longer seven years. It's five months for the elect's sake. Otherwise, no flesh would be saved, as Christ said. So by the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. There's stones again. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Here you have the death sentence, and this is why Satan is the only son of perdition, the only one sentenced to perish. Even more positive identification of the false Christ. It's Satan himself disguised as Jesus. Why else would the entire world whore after him? Because they're going to think that he's Jesus because he's supernatural. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror and never shalt thou be any more. There you have it. Positive identification. The son of perdition. There's only one. We just documented it in Ezekiel chapter 28. It's right there. 
Satan himself, that's the false Christ, that's the false prophet, son of perdition, whatever you want to call him, the person that appears claiming to be Christ returned at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial is Satan himself disguised as Jesus. For more information on this, go to mark13records.com.